Well, good morning, Bob. Good morning, Bill. We are talking about business cycles, and it seems like every year, for the last several years, at the beginning of the year, there are all these forecasts that come out and say gross domestic product, GDP, is going to grow at 3.5%, and we get into the first quarter, and it seems like we start backtracking. Well, it's never quite as good as you want it to be, right? You well, know, is it the holiday season, all the alcohol that's flowing? I don't know what it is. Or, you know, uh, maybe it's just the season. Everybody, a new year, you know, it's everybody's optimistic. Jubilee, so, everybody wants uh, a big bonus from last year. Exactly. They get paid out in February, and everybody's right. just happy. But, you know, business cycles are funny. There's... Uh, there are really three different ways that people... Do I get to choose? I like the ups and not the downs. Well, it depends on which side of you're on. You, know? you want to be long, right? <laughs> if I'm short, I like the downs and not the ups. And it seems like it takes a long time to go up and come down quick. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It's, uh, it's funny, though. You know, take a household. And, you know, people think in terms of their own household. And when the, uh, you know, when something happens where your, your revenue, your income goes down, people sort of want to buckle down, and hunker down. cut down their yeah. expenses, you know. and Batten the hatches. Right. And uh, worry about their, you know, and that's, that's the way most people think. Unfortunately, the legislators don't understand often that the government should just be the opposite. Okay. So when the... Uh, you know, when things are bad, that's when the government should be spending like crazy. And when things are good, that's when they should be pulling way back. That would even out the business cycle. It would, it would and because that, uh, that influx of business and uh, revenue is going to help. Because, I mean, these things are sort of chain reactions. Uh, if your income goes down, you spend less, which is somebody else's income is now going down, which they spend less, and it just... It multiplies. It gets multiplied. So, but likewise, when it's going up, the, the effect also happens. That's true, but the government's revenue then goes way up, and it has the opportunity to fix any deficits that occurred during the, the bad times. Well, but know? not the federal government, not the U.S. government. What they do is they just spend more, well, and it's a bipartisan effort in spending more, yeah, by the way. Yeah. You know, it's, we've just had a really interesting natural experiment. You don't have that many experiments in economics where you can really compare things, but we've just had one. You're talking and, about the Great Recession. Yes, the Great Recession, where uh, a lot of the governments started talking about austerity. We can't have a big deficit. We've got to worry about the deficit. We've got to pull everything in. We've got to reduce our spending, which is, of course, the exact opposite of what they should have done. So... We have an experiment where we see different countries responded to that differently. Some of them cut back. Some of them continued their spending and increased their spending. And some, like the U.S., did a little bit of increasing the spending, but not a lot. Well, yeah. they, in terms of fiscal policy, there was very little done in, re in terms of real fiscal policy. That's correct. Most of it was in terms of monetary policy, which was the Fed at work, and the Fed took rates in the negative territory. Right, but there was a stimulus. You know, there there and, was a stimulus. And they tried to do a little bit there, and the effect has been... That, stimulus, you mean the fiscal stimulus. Yeah, the fiscal stimulus. And so uh, the effect is that you can now look at the economies, and the ones that did the austerity are still in bad shape. The ones that did, like the U.S., a little bit of stimulus are, are coming along, and the ones that really did a lot of stimulus are doing great. Well, the, the U.S. took the approach, right, wrong, or indifferent, there are some industries that they were going to take care of. They took care of banking. Right. The TARP was wildly unpopular and yet wildly successful. It was very successful. But it was wildly unpopular. It was a still bi is. It, it still <laughs> is. In fact, many of the members of the Congress and the Senate who voted for TARP to save the country, they did the right thing. In essence, took a political bullet and lost their jobs. And lost their jobs. And, 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 and yet, it was the right thing to do to smooth out the business cycle. Exactly. Because what happened was we had a credit problem, and, and we had a liquidity problem. So what happened? They pumped money into the banks. They made the banks take money. If you were above a certain size, you had to take money. Right. And, and the idea was to liquefy the banks so they would loan money. Some did, some didn't. Right. But they didn't go out of business. Exactly. 
and, and it was had the effect of being a big stimulus. Yeah, and they did it for the automakers too. They did it for the automakers, and, and it's been wildly successful. Very successful. Uh, all the automakers are doing well now. Uh, the banks are doing extremely well. Uh, so that's been all really good. Uh, you know, people don't seem to understand that. I think we need to have uh, more economics education, you know, in the, in the school system. How about financial education? Well, that may be a little, <laughs> can throw a little bit in there, yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about the business cycle. We've had business cycles since the beginning of time. Sure. Things go up, they come down. Right. And it's, as Alan Greenspan said, it's never as good as it appears, nor bad as it appears. Right. Well, you know, a lot of people, I mean, there's a large segment of the population that right now, the, the Tea Party types and the uh, libertarians, who are saying the government should not try to uh, mitigate business just, cycles. Just, just, just hands off. Let the, let the system go through these cycles and we can have the crashes and then we can come back up and do what? Well. That's actually one of the reasons the Federal Reserve came into being in 1913 is to mitigate some of the business cycles. That's I don't, exactly I, pe right. People do not want to experience the real effects of the business cycle. They don't want to do that. Well, they, they like the ups, and they want the, the highs on the ups, but it's like a drug. Yeah, it's, it's a puzzle to me why there's so much resistance to trying to smooth out those business cycles. Well, uh, well, well there's no opposition on the way up. Yeah, I know, but uh, well, there is actually. There's a lot of uh, a lot of criticism of the government and the Federal Reserve. Uh, those people, doing in, the any type those of people in the background, though, on the way up, because it's all good. The punch Everybody's is flowing. Happy, yeah. They're all happy. Yeah, but but they're still criticizing. They're still they're criticizing. Still they're talking. You know, and it's a puzzle to me because we've it's just gone not the majority through a period on the way up. Right, but we've gone through a period where there has been a lot of severe. Uh, hurt to our population. You know, and, people are out of jobs for a long time. And yet, when the market comes down, it's headed down, and the Fed is stepping in, doing their role at mitigating those business cycles, it seems like that's when they get the greatest uh, uh, criticism. Yes, absolutely. A and yet, it comes from people who, I don't know if they have no knowledge of the Fed, or they're just politic or philosophically or politically opposed to the Fed, but there is a lot of criticism. It sure is. And, you know, even calling for the dismissal of the The, the elimination. You, know, you had some politicians, even for president, right. this last time, who were calling for the elimination of the Federal Reserve. So I, all I can figure is they simply don't understand. No, 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 that's not it. They were in Colorado and Washington State when they were legalizing marijuana. And that's what it was? They, that's they what it was. The fumes. Around there, the yeah. fumes. That, I, I, there's no other way to explain it. Yeah, but that's different. If they were, if that were true, Bill, I'm testing your hypothesis there, they wouldn't be saying get rid of the Fed. They would be saying whatever. <laughs> that's right. That's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> they wouldn't care. Exactly. Well, if they just... Uh, uh, if they didn't inhale, they might be saying. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so we have these business cycles. We have all sorts of levers that the federal government has. We've only talked pretty much about monetary policy. Let's talk about fiscal policy. There's this big debate about taxes, tax rates, deductions, that sort of thing. We we we're all. Um, we've just passed a debt ceiling bill, right. and, and and it's in abeyance now to March of 15, and so there's a big discussion about what tax policy should be. Well, one of the issues that people are, are increasingly concerned about is the disparity in income, the income inequality in our country. It's right more now. than a financial issue now, it's become a social issue. Very much so. and and. You know, it, uh, someone I saw recently was referring into it as a fractal problem. I don't know if you're familiar with the mathematical concept of fractals, but it's the same pattern no matter how far down you go. And so what you see is that the top 1% has like 40% of all the income. But if you go to the top one-tenth of 1%, 1 they have like 30% of all the income. You right. know, so it's a... It's concentrated, concentrated. on a very, right. very small minority of people, and the tax policies that we have give them a great deal of opportunity to shelter their money 
from the tax system. Do, do you think, and I'm, I'm asking this as a question because I go back and forth on this myself, do you think it is the amount and type of education that the top 1% have? Because if you look at wealth in this country, much of it is first generation. Yeah, and, uh, and that's true, but uh, they, it was funny, they just... There was because just that, would tend to, to, that would tend to, except for, well, that would negate basically a state tax policy. It would tend to ratify the current state tax policy if it's first generation wealth. Uh, yes and no. I mean, it, it depends. I mean, it, certainly the right now, the people with the most money have the most power in terms of influencing political tax policy. Right? That's true. That's absolutely and true. And they are uh, they are controlling of that. But and and many of them, when you talk to them, feel that their position with this wealth is totally justified, and they deserve every penny of it. And you know what's funny is they just did a, uh, a study where they interviewed and looked at the policies and, and uh, views of lottery winners. Right. And it's the same pattern. Okay, through no effort of their own other than buying a lottery ticket, right. they are now immensely wealthy and they feel that it's through their own hard work that they are now and they should be protected to receive all that money. Well, there was, a, there was a study out last week, and we'll wrap up with this. There was a study out last week that looked at the average number of hours worked, and it looked at it by wealth. Yeah. And in first-generation wealth holders, the average work year was 3,900 hours, essentially double right. what the right. average American was. So they, are, they do work harder. Right. And they feel like it's earned. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but that's their perception from survey data. We uh -huh. Well, enough about that. We're all about the business cycles and smoothing <laughs> them out. They're going to occur. Right. I'm ready for the spring cycle right now. <laughs> the the thaw, sun. The thaw, the thaw cycle. The thaw <laughs> cycle. The beat cycle. Well, this is FNC's Morning View. You all have a fantastic week. Hope you have a happy President's Day, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.